Um, just so you guys know, um, access consciousness classes are really, really about you. Okay. They're about you. They're about you and your questions. Your questions actually create the class. Okay. And what we're going to talk about today is something that is very, very dear to me. Okay. You know, many of us spend our whole careers, our whole lives wondering like where, what is our voice? What, what makes your voice unique? for what you're choosing or what you do or what you have to offer. And I've been doing access consciousness for many, many years, as well as some many, many other modalities. And in May of 2021, I had the incredible blessing of meeting uh, Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness. And it's such a cool story. I'm gonna tell you the whole story actually, first of all. so. It was at a time that Gary was having some challenges in his body. He had um, shingles, which, you know, kind of makes it hard when anybody touches you. It makes you uncomfortable. Okay. So um, at the beginning of that workshop, that class, uh, one of the hosts made an announcement and said, you know, guys, just to be mindful of Gary's, the way Gary's condition is right now, please don't hug him because it hurts. It's painful for him. So please don't hug him. Of course, you can speak to him, whatever, just just don't hug him. And so, um, so everybody was really aware and really mindful. Anyway, so we had the morning session and then we broke for lunch and Gary comes right over to me and and he says out of nowhere, he goes, you have such a great taste he said look at you he says i love your taste he goes i love your shoes love this and i love that and i just looked at him and i said i love you and he just melted and he reached out and he gave me a giant hug and everybody around goes uh what is going on gary is like so not into that and I gave Gary a hug and he goes, and your hugs are so healing. And we started to chat and we started to talk. And that was day number one. We had a five days together and we went about our classes, did our things. And then the next day, same thing. At our break, Gary came up to me. We started chatting and Gary said to me, you are very charming. And I go, oh, oh my God. You know, immediately your brain goes, what does that mean? What is, what is, what is that? What is this? And, you know, I've heard that before. People tell me I'm charming. And I was like, I said to him, I said, well, thank you, Gary. Thank you so much. And he goes, I think you need to, I think it would be a great contribution if you taught people how to be charming this was a teacher's class, a, a facilitator's class. And I was like, awesome. I would love to play with that. And so, so then I started to really ask a lot of questions about what it would be like for me to teach a class about how to be charming. And, you know, in America, we have a lot of interesting points of views about charm. And I remember growing up, there was a woman called Ann Landers, right? And she was a columnist and you would write in and you would ask Ann Landers for, um, for advice. And a lot of it was about being charming. And, um, you know, there was this old show that, you know, you would send the kids to this place called charm school to teach them how to be charming. And so I kind of played immediately with this energy of charm school. What does it mean to be charming? And what would it me mean to have a conscious class about being charming? And so again, too, just as you are all here, I began to ask more questions and ask more questions and ask more questions. And it all kind of came to me. And so I created the class Charm School. Charm School is an Access of Consciousness approved class. It was approved by Gary Douglas and Dr. Dane here. 
I consider myself very, very lucky to have the blessing of all of them to be able to do this and to teach it. <laughs> now, as so, with so many things that have kind of like happened in the world, I actually have not had the blessing to be able to teach it in person yet. And when Karen approached me about coming to Manila to teach a bunch of access consciousness classes, I'd mentioned to her that I'd love to be able to share charm school and premier charm school in the Philippines. And Karen was very, very excited about that possibility. And she said, let's do it. And so I'm going to give you guys just a little bit of a hint about what charm school is about. Okay. It's going to be super, super fun and super, super light. Before we begin the class, I'm going to actually ask you to please, please, please participate, okay? This is the only way that we're going to be able to create the space and the energy of what we get to be and receive here in this space. So the first question that I propose to all of you is, what does it mean to be charming? What does it mean to be charming? I'm actually, Karen, I'm going to put you on the spot first, my dear. I'm also, my dear friend Marika made me a little bit of breakfast because I haven't eaten. So I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to have a little bit of breakfast while we talk. But I'm putting the spotlight on you, Karen, and Jack first to ask you, what does it mean to be charming? Um, hi, everyone. Hi, Daniel. So I kind of know the subtitle of the task of your class, like... Mm -hmm. The charm schools, the art of being interested. And you did say it's about being interested more than being interesting. So I feel That's like correct. given that, it's really turning the table around and putting the spotlight on the other person. And that's I that's what I think what happened with you and Gary. Like when you met him, you just put all your attention on him. And that made you charming. Which which is contrary to popular belief. Because most people feel that. If I'm the most interesting person in the room, I'm charming. But you, what That's you're right. teaching it from your examples earlier is that, no, it's the other way around. If you can put the attention on one person and the other person, that's what charm is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so cute. I just yeah. love you both. You're right. You're, you're exactly right, Karen. So... One of the things that Gary actually shared and taught is that, you know, most of us, when we think of being charming, we think that we have to be the one who's interesting, right? That we have to be the one who's unique, that stands out, that actually um, gets attention. We think that being charming is like having everybody love you. So everything that brings up for you, can we just destroy and uncreate it? Everywhere you've decided that in order for you to get what you want or to engage others, that you have to be the one who is interesting. Can we destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and puck, all nine shorts, boys, povets and beyonds. Those of you who are joining for the first time, I'm using the Access Consciousness Clearing Statement. If you were here last week, you know what it is. If not, Karen's going to post the link. Karen, if you could post the link in the chat box to theclearingstatement.com so that you guys can research that later. I'm going to use that a lot today. And that's right. That's exactly right, Karen. You know, we, especially in America, I'm going to speak as an American here. You know, we walk around and we say, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? But we don't really mean how are you. Just a greeting. So oftentimes when I ask somebody, how are you? I wait. And they're like, oh, you actually are asking me? I said, yeah, how are you? And they're like, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. And then you get this engagement, which is one of the biggest tools about being charming. Engagement. All of a sudden, in engagement, you actually demonstrate that you care, that you actually care about the person who's in front of you. So everywhere that you've decided that caring about the person in front of you is overwhelming, or that you don't have the energy or the space or the bandwidth to actually care about the person that's in front of you, can we please destroy and uncreate it? 
right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pod, online, shorts, boys, both ads and beyonds. So what happens in that moment, a lot of times when I ask somebody how they're doing, they don't respond because they think the next thing gonna, is out of my mouth is going to be what I want, right? So when when I when they say, you know, good afternoon, how can I help you? I go, how are you today? And they think I go, can you tell me where the ta 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 is? No. You've got to allow the space to be. How are you? And allow them to have that moment where they go, well, thank you for asking. So to be charming is to be interested, not interesting. Being interesting is putting all of your energy onto somebody else. Being interested is you willing to receive the energy of the person who is in front of you. From there, you can actually begin to play with the atoms and the molecules of what's going on. Remember, guys, we're talking about energy here. Energy is very, very simple. It's not complex. Everything is just a matter of these energies that are floating in space. And because these energies are floating in space, we want to engage those energies. When we engage in the energies, we can change the atoms and molecules around. So I'd love to hear from somebody else, anybody else, what you perceive charming means. What does charming mean? Somebody said to me one time, well, I think charming means they think of charming as in getting what you want. Like people think that it's a manipulation, right? That charming is a manipulation. And then they go into the wrongness of it being a manipulation. Charming is a manipulation, but it's a manipulation for both parties that are actually invested. It's not just a manipulation so that you get what you want. It's a manipulation so that the other person also receives what could be a comp, a, 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 a um, contribution to them, okay? And so attractive. I love that you said that, Lee Jay. Lee Jay says attractive. Charming means to be attractive. So let's just ask a question. To be attractive, if you have the awareness or the point of view that you have to be attractive, is that being interested or interesting? That's being interesting. If we are busy with worrying about how attractive we are. That's being interesting, not interested, right? To be interested is to be able to acknowledge that you already are attractive. You don't have to do anything to be attractive. You just get to be you. The more that you are you, without the point of view that you have to put on a piece of clothing or put your makeup on or buy expensive shoes, although all those things are wonderful, they're not wrong. But the point of view that you have to do any of those things, that you have to do anything to be charming, Everywhere you've decided that in order for you to be charming, that you have to make yourself something, can we destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, online, shorts, boys, povets, and beyonds. Being charming is about allowing yourself to truly, truly be you. So <clears throat> one of the big tools of char being charming is engagement. We, so we said that, right? Engagement, number one. Number two is to be you. You can't engage with others if you're not authentically you, okay? So everywhere that you've decided that you have to judge yourself, that in order for you to be charming, that you have to judge yourself as attractive or not attractive, can we destroy and uncreate that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine, shorts, boys, povets, and beyonds. And I really, really, really love what Natasha says here. To be charming is to be yourself. That's right, Natasha. To be charming is also to be aware that not everyone is going to be able to receive you. How often in our desire to be charming do we go, oh, I must not be charming because that person doesn't like me or that person doesn't respond to me the way I wanted them to or they didn't give me what I want to be or what I want to have. We go, oh, something must be wrong with me. Everywhere you've made other people's points of views, conclusions, and expectations about you, yours, instead of truly being you. Can we destroy and uncreate it? 
right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys, povads, and beyonds. And so being attractive or being, um, being, what, what did you say, Natasha? Being charming is to be yourself, right? So look, let's be honest. Most of us will say, oh, I have good days and I have bad days. Everywhere you've decided that you have to label uh, yourself as a good day or a bad day, can we cancel, delete, destroy, and uncreate that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, online, shorts, boys, puppets, and beyonds. And then we have all of the reasonings and justifications as to why we're having a good day or a bad day or a whatever. So everywhere you're looking for the reasons and justifications to validate the choice that you want to make, can we destroy and uncreate that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, online, shorts, boys, puppets, and beyonds. You see, we often go, well, I'm having a bad day. But we say I'm having a bad day because the truth is, is I just want to stay home and do nothing. But you say I'm having a bad day. So everybody knows that you're not present, that you're not here, or that you're choosing something else. And what that does is that creates a boundary. Are boundaries right or wrong? No. But what if it was just the awareness for you to become present with that space that you've created between people? Oftentimes we think of boundaries as things we have to push, but what if it's just your energy requiring another choice? Let me say that again. What if a boundary, that which we called a boundary was just the space an allowance for you to know that there's another choice that is available for you, right? How often have we been around people who really sucked our energy or they didn't feel like they were contributing to us? And we go, oh, I can't, I have to, I have to, I have to remove myself from them. That is a rejection. That's, that's a, that's a, that is a, um, a judgment, right? Instead of simply being, in the space of making another choice. Choice is what creates possibilities. Being charming is also knowing that you always have choice. Always have choice. So one of the biggest things that people come to me for in their private sessions is dating advice. Ooh. They go, I don't understand. I put myself out there. I do this, I do that. Um, you know, I'm I'm allowing myself to be open and nobody's choosing me. I don't understand why anybody's choosing me. What if it was your energy that you were unwilling to be chosen? So everywhere that you're blocking people from choosing you by putting up boundaries and walls, can we destroy it and create it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, only shorts, boys, puppets, and beyonds. We have to have space. We have to be space for others. We have to be space for everyone and everything. You know, here in London, it's very busy. Very busy. You get on the tube, the subway here. You get on the tube. You walk through a, a thing, and it's like so much energy. And you go, <gasps> right? In that moment. I want you to try something when you're in a crowd of people or you you find yourself there. Ask yourself, what would it take for me to melt all my walls and barriers? Just to melt all my walls and barriers, to be present here. Because the minute you go, oh, I can't, nobody can see you. Nobody can see you. So how do you expect somebody to come up to you and say, hi, you're so beautiful. Would you like to have a cup of coffee with me? If your energy is like, no, oh, it'll never happen. So when you're in those spaces, when you're surrounded with a lot of people, invite yourself to melt your walls and barriers. If you melt your walls and barriers, what gets to happen is that anything and anyone can actually see you. Everywhere you're unwilling to be seen because you're afraid that you will be judged. Can we destroy and uncreate it? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pot, all nine shorts, boys, povads and beyonds. And that leads me to one of the other tools about being charming. It's a hard one. 
I know you guys are going to really, 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 really resist and react to this one. And that's being willing to be judged. Are you willing to be judged? So let me just throw out some, some questions out here. What's the worst part about being judged? Can somebody answer that for me? I'm just going to sit here and eat my toast while you guys respond. What's the worst thing about being judged? I think it's like actually believing that you are that judgment and you imbibe it and it becomes you. I think that's the worst thing. Yes. Beautiful answer, Lee. Lee or Leah? It's Leah. 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 That is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing, right? Everywhere we've decided that if people judge us, we have to believe them. Can we destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, puck, online, shorts, boys, pub, ads, and beyonds. Well, if they say it, it must be true. Interesting point of view. Interesting point of view. They have that point of view. That's your tool, Leah. Leah. That's another tool that we talk about in charm school. Interesting point of view. When somebody judges you, it's an opportunity for you instead to not take their judgment on, but to first of all, acknowledge whatever it is the judgment may be and say interesting point of view. When you say interesting point of view, you basically send the energy back to them. You don't make it about you. The thing is, guys, is that most of us don't know ourselves. We're not interested in ourselves. When we're not interested in ourselves, people are going to judge us because what our vibration says is, I'm looking for validation. I'm looking to know what I am or who I am or how people see me. When you do that, you open up the space for people to judge you and you, you go, I don't want to hear that. Right? Right? And when you go, I don't want to hear that, what you've done is you have created a conclusion. So everywhere that you've decided that you have to allow others to tell you who you are instead of you choosing who you are, can we destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys, pop, ads, and beyonds. Natasha says people will talk shit about you. Yeah, they will. So what? Are you willing to allow people to talk shit about you? Natasha, can you come forward, my love? Can you unmute yourself? It's a great question. What's the worst thing about people talking shit about you? Can you hear me, sweetie? Maybe you can't speak right now. That's okay. So people talking shit about you, yeah, they are. They will. People talk shit about me all the time. Right? It's the resistance and their reaction to that that actually makes it real. Okay? So being willing to allow others to talk about you, period, whether it's talking shit or talking praisefully or magically or oh my god natasha is so amazing or oh my god that bitch natasha she's evil or she's greedy or she's selfish it means they're talking about you would you rather have people not talk about you right when people are talking about you is that from being interested or being interesting my awareness is that it's about being interested. Interesting. Natasha says interesting. Why do you think that's interesting, Natasha? Because you're going to be judged? Is that why? You can answer in the box. Gossip? Yeah, Lee J. The thing is, We've made these things so wrong in our reality, right? We've made gossip and judgment so wrong. Guys, what happens when we make something wrong? We create more of it. 
there's a law in the universe that says resistance creates persistence. So if you're, if you are resisting something, you're going to receive more of it. When you're in allowance of something, then it actually releases and transforms. Think about it very in this, in these terms. Okay. So you have, let's say this is a wall and you're pushing up against the wall. You feel that resistance, 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 resistance. The wall isn't going anywhere. The wall isn't going anywhere. The wall isn't going anywhere. When you let go, all of a sudden, you go this way. And then all of a sudden, there's another choice that's available. Think of it with people. So think about when you get in a disagreement or disargument with somebody and you, you need to be heard. You need to make yourself right. You go, I'm right, 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 I'm right. All of a sudden, if you go, oh, interesting point of view, what happens? That person's energy just dissipates. So everywhere you've decided that you have to be right, instead of allowing the energy to be just interesting point of view, can we destroy and uncreate it? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine. Shorts, boys, povads, and beyonds. Yes, Lije, gossip. Let's talk about that for a second. What's the worst thing about gossip? Lije, if you could unmute yourself, I would love to have some interaction here with you guys today. I'm thinking. Yeah. Gossip, is, it's something we should avoid. I remember Vianna told us that. Yes, of course. Gossip definitely it's something that we could all choose gossip is a judgment period if you're if you're gossiping or you're in gossip then that means that you're judging others right is it a kindness is judgment is is gossip a kindness no anywhere that we choose judgment we are not aligning with our energy Judgment and gossip, all of that stuff is trying to be something that you're not. That is trying to be interesting. Think about the times in your life where you've been engaged in gossip with somebody. And you're like, did you hear that? Did you hear what they said? You know, I lived in Mexico for a long time. Mexicans love to gossip. Don't they, mi amor? They love to gossip. They love, 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 love to gossip. Gossip, 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 gossip. Did you hear about this? 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 Why do we do it? Because we want to have the information so that we can be interesting. I have a tidbit about so-and-so. Guess what so-and-so did? Everybody goes, ooh, Daniel knows what so-and-so did. And then we go run to that source. Now, all of a sudden, you're interesting. Everybody's paying attention to you. So what if instead of gossiping, it was about asking questions? Right? If you hear somebody saying gossip to you, and they say, oh, my God, Auntie Sarah is crazy. She's crazy, and she did this, and she did that. We usually go, really? That's horrible. But if we could turn it around and say, wow, I wonder why she chose that. Guess what happens? You stop the gossip because they go, oh, you actually care? So changing that energy around when somebody, when you're in the presence of gossip, then you become interested, not interesting, right? To become interesting is to say, wow, I wonder why she chose that. What if she was really going through something really crazy in her life and that's what she had to do in those moments? All of a sudden, people will stop gossiping, right? Because that's exactly what it is. It's the invitation to create greater instead of locking something in. Karen says, here we call the gossipers Mar Maritas? Maritas? Yeah. Maritas? Marites. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Marites. And they come, and they come together. together everywhere. Ah, so yeah. Just talk about other people. Yeah, that. Right? 
And and have you ever been in the energy of a bunch of those people before? You're like, ugh. Maybe for a minute you enjoy it. You're like, ooh, this is kind of fun. But you leave and you're like, ugh, gross. And then where does your mind go? I wonder if they speak like that about me when I'm not around. Right? Your awareness is probably spot on that they do. So everywhere that you've decided that in order for you to be relevant, you have to have people talking about you. Can we destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, puck, online, shorts, boys, bovads, and beyonds. Karen asks so beautifully, I wonder why we choose that or why they choose that, right? Look, let's be let's be real. Every single one of us engages in gossip at some point or another. Whether you call it gossip or you don't call it gossip, every single one of us. None of us is immune to this crap, right? It's true. Why do we choose it? So I'm going to ask you the question, Karen. Why do you choose gossip? Why would you choose gossip? Why do people choose gossip? Because it like it's easier for them. Because the no 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 no. Karen, Karen, wait. Why do you choose gossip? Oh, I don't like gossip. Anymore. Think about it. Think about a time where you spoke about somebody else. Why did you choose to speak about somebody else? Don't okay. label it gossip because you've already decided gossip is wrong. So just say speaking about someone else and attaching a point of view, a good or a bad or a right or wrong. Why have you done that? Why do we do that? Why did you do that? Me, I have an answer. Yeah, Jack has an answer. Yeah. I don't have an answer. I think uh, it's because if there's a need for me when I do that, like to be above somebody else. There you go. Beautiful, Jack. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So everywhere we've decided that in order for us to make ourselves interesting that we have to put ourselves above someone else instead of seeing them where they're at. Can we please revoke, recant, rescind, reclaim, renounce, denounce, destroy, and uncreate it? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, povads, and beyonds. Thank you. And we all do it. So everywhere you're beating yourself up right now for being a gossip queen or a gossip king, can you just let that go? It's all in the past. Everywhere that you've chosen to be interesting instead of being, uh, where you've chosen to be interested instead of interesting in the past, it's done. It's finished. So could you please forgive yourself? Be an allowance of yourself. Oh, wow, that was me 10 seconds ago. You know, we have a tool in access, which you'll learn in the foundation class. Actually, yeah, in the foundation class, we have what's called the 10 keys to total freedom. And one of the keys to total freedom is, guess what? Creating your life in 10 second increments. Creating your life in 10 second increments. Now, what does that mean? Basically, to make a long story short, is that you always have a choice. You don't like what's going on in these 10 seconds. What do you do? Make another choice. Make another choice, make another choice, make another choice. But when we fall back into those places in our lives where we have any kind of regret, rejection, resentment towards who we were, or what we chose in the past, we're not making a choice. If you resent yourself from something you did or said, that's not making a choice. That's not a choice. Resentment is not a choice, right? I guess actually it is a choice, right? It is a choice, but is it a choice that's going to create greater for you? That's the question you want to ask. I think last week we spoke about the light and heavy tool. Do we speak about the light and heavy tool, Karen? The light and heavy tool is, is that when anything is light for you, it's true. Anything is heavy, it's a lie. Okay? So what is light for you is what you want to follow. Why do we say light and heavy instead of good and bad? Because every single one of us has a different awareness of energy. So what is right, what is light for Guillermo might not be light for me. And what is heavy for Guillermo might be light for me. So we all have a different awareness and a different perception of the energies around us. It's not about making anything or anyone else wrong, including us. It's about allowing yourself to hold the space to say, you know what, I'm going to choose something that is greater, that is lighter 
that is even more of a contribution here for us. Okay, so those are all amazing, amazing points. I want to kind of give you guys, let's call it a call to action. Is anyone here in sales? If you're in sales, raise your hand. Raise your hand. A couple of you are in sales. Maybe some of you are in sales and don't know how to raise your hand on the screen. That's fine too. Natasha, Guillermo's also in sales. My my love, you're in sales. Lee J's in sales. We're, those of us are teachers. We're in sales, right? We need people to come to our class. Hello, we need clients. We need students. We require them. Irina is in sales. All of you are in sales. Let's just imagine you're all in sales. Let's also imagine that every single one of us would like to increase our sales. Does everybody agree? Yay. I want more clients. I want more students. I want more products to sell. I want more. 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 Everybody wants more. You agree? Great. So <clears throat> one of the biggest mistakes we make in this reality is how this reality says you have to show up in business. Excuse my French, but it's fucked up. It's fucked up. Because it says, well, in order for me to sell this apartment, I have got to go in there and I have to show them that I have the best product. I have the best class. I am the best teacher. I am the best facilitator. I am the best agent. I have the most beautiful bag. I have the most precious bath salts to sell you. Every single one of us has something to sell. But when you sell something, are you trying to be interested? Are you trying to be interesting? I would venture to say most of us are trying to be interesting because we want people to come to us, right? I can't even begin to tell you guys how much this changed my life. Especially for those of you, those of us who work, who are teachers and facilitators, and we want people to come to our classes. We make these beautiful flyers, do these beautiful websites, spend thousands and thousands of dollars, and we go, nobody's coming to my classes. That's because you're not interested. You're interesting. Anywhere you say, I have to have people come to me, that's you trying to be interesting instead of engaging in those who you would like to invite to your class. All of my success, all of my success, I have now realized the biggest majority of my success has simply come by me being me. Just by me being me. By me being me and inviting you into my world. Look, we have such an amazing group of people. We have 15 people here. Every single one of you is, I love your energies. I love your energies. Even those of you who are not on camera, I see you just so you know. <laughs> I love your energies. I didn't go out there and say, oh, you have to come to Daniel's Charm School class. It's going to be the most amazing class in the world. You have to do this. You have to do that. No. I said, you know what? I'm going to show up and be me. So how can you now translate that into real estate? I'm going to share something really powerful with you. I work with some real estate teams in New York City. And when I started to share this tool with them, their sales incre increased by 30%. 30%. Okay? Now, let's imagine you live in New York City. You're a real estate agent in New York City. And you've got an apartment that's $10 million that you have to sell. First of all, there aren't a whole lot of people that can afford a $10 million apartment. Right. And guess what? You're not the only real estate broker in New York City. But you want to sell that apartment. So, how can you be interesting instead of interested? You become excited about that which you have to sell. Simply you, you. 
without the point of view that you have to sell it or that it has to be seen or that it has to be marketed or the right person has to show up. All of that can be canceled, delete, destroy, and create. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine shorts, boys, puppets, and guns. You get to get excited. You get to get excited about this $10 million apartment. You get to invest your energy. Wow, I love what I am representing so much. This apartment is so beautiful. It has such a contribution to offer. Sell it to yourself first, guys. This has so much to offer. This is such a beautiful space. And you know what? The person that's the lightest vibrational match to come here, wow, they're really, really going to find their home. That's how you start the conversation. And then when you all of a sudden somebody shows up and says, hey, Jack, could you show me that $10 million apartment on the Upper East Side? I'd love to see that. You go, of course. Of course, Guillermo. What are you, what, what is it that you actually are looking for? Guillermo says, well, I'm looking for a space for my partner and I. We want to start a family. We like this area. We like this neighborhood. A lot of us go, okay, well, that checks all the boxes. Let me try to sell it to you. No. Cool. What's your partner's name? Oh, my partner's Daniel. What do you guys do? What do you guys, what do you, what do you and your partner do? Well, my partner is a motivational speaker and I do digital marketing and, oh, no way. That's so cool. You know, my girlfriend has a, um, a school in Manila. And you know what she does is she invites people to, um, to take classes with people like your boyfriend. We should connect them. How cool would that be? All of a sudden, it's not become about the apartment. It's not about selling the apartment. It's about becoming interested in the person who is in front of you. That's how we create relationships. And then guess what? The hardest fucking part of it all, you get to let go of whether or not they decide that they want it or not and hold a judgment towards them whether they do or they don't. So let me let me demonstrate for you. Okay, Jack says, Guillermo, I'm going to show you this apartment. I think you'll really love it. Let's see what you feel. Guillermo goes in. He goes, oh, wow. Wow, this is really cool. And Guillermo feels your energy in the apartment, Jack. Guillermo goes, wow, I see what Jack was talking about. It does have this. It does have this. It does have this. And Guillermo says, you know what, Jack? I need a place that has one more bedroom. This is not going to work for me. Most of us in that position go, Ugh, great. We beat ourselves up. We make ourselves wrong. We say, well, here we go again. Now I have to go out there and find another buyer for this place. And then you dismiss Guillermo. You never speak to Guillermo again. What if the act of engagement was you letting go of the outcome of what you want in favor for greater? So everywhere that you're attached to an outcome that locks you in to the expression of embodiment that you're trying to make instead of actually being the space, can we destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shorts, boys, pop, and beyonds. But if Jack says, no problem, Guillermo, I totally understand. Tell me a little bit more about what those requirements are, what the things is that really excite you. What did you love about this space? What did you love about what it, What do you think your partner would enjoy? Can we meet? Can we? Can I meet them? Can I have fun with them? So it's not about drawing the line and creating a judgment. It's about opening up the space so that you can have more. Right. So everywhere we've decided that all of a sudden, when we don't get what we want, we have to block ourselves off. Can we destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, choice, boys, puppets, and beyonds. So what if, and then and then you go, and then immediately our head goes, Oh, well, I'm gonna I have this other apartment that I'm gonna sell him. It's on the east side. It's on the east side, and it's not quite 10 million, it's 7.3, but it does have an extra bathroom. Maybe that's what he would like. So then Jack says, hey, Guillermo, I have this other space that became available. Would you like to look at that? And maybe Guillermo says, you know what, Jack? I think we're just going to take a break right now. 
from looking because it's a little overwhelming. Again, instead of going into judgment, instead of going into the wrongness of you, you go, no problem, Guillermo. I'm always here for you. Best, best of luck to you and your partner. Three months, six months, maybe even three years down the road. Guillermo, Guillermo remembers how interested you were in him. He calls you and he says, Jack, my partner and I are coming to Manila. I would love to meet you. And Jack says, oh my God, that would be amazing. And all of a sudden, something else is created in a different way. Energy is not linear, guys. Right? So even though Guillermo came to look for an apartment, he may have actually found, an, uh, they may have found in opportunities for their partners that would have created greater in the world. Am I clear about that? Does that make sense, Jack? You see what we're saying here? So in, in, uh, in being interesting, interested, being interested in somebody else is being invested in them for as long as there is a reciprocation of that energy. And even though the person may not be in front of you, you may not see Guillermo for three years, four years, five years. What happens when all of a sudden Guillermo goes, you know what? That person that tried to sell me that, or that, that sold me that $10 million apartment, or that wanted to sell me that $10, $10 million apartment, their energy left an imprint on my soul. And that's what I want to engage with. That never goes away. How many times in your life, think about the people that you remember in your life. Are the people that you remember in your life the people who are interesting or are they people who are interested? If the people that you remember are the people who are interesting, Think about all of the points of views that you may have towards those people, right? Like, whoa, that person was really a, a lot, or that person's energy was really trying to um, prove something. Being interesting means you're trying to prove something. Being interested is being willing to receive and be all of those energies. Okay, so in the Charm School class, um, it's a day class. It's a day long class. It's really, really fun. For those of you who um, don't know access consciousness, you can also come even if you have no previous experience of access consciousness, because we will do a brief intro to access, give you some basic tools about access in the class. But what's really, really fun about Charm School is I'm actually going to put you guys in the front of the room. And you are going to actually practice being interested in somebody else. So what I, what we will do is we will say, look at those places in your life where you are trying to get something, whether it's a relationship, a sale or this or that. And we're gonna act out basically different scenarios. Most of you guys know that I, I, I'm an, a professional actor. I've been a professional actor since I was 10 years old. So I love getting in a space and watching people act things out. But instead of acting out, what you're gonna get to do is you're gonna get to be the energy that is required so that you can actually perceive it and feel it for yourself. When you perceive it and you feel it for yourself, all of a sudden things expand, expand in your universe and you can't go back to being interesting because every time you try to be interesting, you'll go, every time I try to be interesting, I go, ugh, I don't like that energy. What will it take for me to be interested? And when you do that, you get to play with that. So in the class, we do a lot of this. Um, the second half of the class is dedicated to me facilitating you with the energy that's in front of you, the person that's in front of you, so that you can see how you can actually create more in your life. Okay. So, you know, one of the tools that you're going to learn in the Access Consciousness Foundation class is manipulation. Who, when you hear that word manipulation, do you go, oh, Ugh, manipulation. Ugh. Right? Here's the deal. I Leah, I love your face. Right? That's the way I was too. I was like, ugh, manipulation. The thing is, is that the truth is, guys, in this reality, you're either you're either 
being manipulated or you're the manipulator, period. Manipulation means just getting what you want. So what if you could manipulate the atoms and the molecules around you to receive and to have more than you could ever have imagined was possible and available to you before? So we're going to talk about manipulation from the point of view of allowance and awareness and creating more in our lives instead of from a judgment and from something that we resist. Okay. So anyone have any questions about charm school before we wrap up today? Any questions about what you can expect? Any questions about the class? Anything at all? Just go ahead and unmute yourself and, and I'll be happy to answer those. Karen, do you have any questions? Well, no questions, but Jack is so excited already yeah. for Charm School because <laughs> he's I in know. sales and he feels that like it will be perfect for people in sales. Yeah, you know, Jack, also, I wanted to also tell you, this is a great class to invite your teammates, okay? Whether they know anything about access or not, you could actually just call this a sales class. This is one of the things that I'm working on is actually being able to market this as a sales class, okay? So for those of you who may have people or teams of people who you want to work on sales with you, by all means, please invite them, okay? Okay, cool. <clears throat> Any more questions? Questions, comments, concerns, anything else you'd like to add? Good. Well, we, Guillermo and I, look really, really forward to meeting you all in Manila and playing with these energies. And what else is truly possible that we've never considered before? So your home play this week, should you choose to accept it, is to see, how can I be more interested? How can I be more interested? If you guys wake up every day and say, and you ask the universe this question, what will it take for me to be more interested? Watch what shows up for you. Okay. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Karen and Jack and everyone. I'm grateful for you all. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. And we'll see you guys very soon.